All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about how to quickly create a house inside of Rhino. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna start off and we wanna build the outline of our house. And so the first thing we wanna do is we just wanna draw a line. So we're just gonna type in line right here, and we're gonna set a line that goes from one point to another point. And so one thing that you might find helpful is you might want to turn on um, ortho snapping as well as maybe smart track in your snapping down below. I'll link to a video about snapping in the notes down below. But what we want is we want this to inference to different points in here so that we can draw precisely. And so in this case, we want a single click and then we want to draw a line whatever the length of our house is going to be. So let's say it's going to be 35 feet. I can just type in a value of 35 feet and hit the enter key. And that's going to draw a line in this direction right here. And then let's say we wanted to draw another line. We would just type in line again. We're gonna click and notice how right now this is snapping to this direction. That's because I have ortho snapping turned on like this. And we're gonna go ahead and say this has a width of, we'll call it 25 feet. So if you type in 25 feet, notice how when I move my mouse in this direction, it's showing me a point showing where that point is going to be placed even though my cursor is off in the distance. So if I click, it's going to go ahead and it's going to draw that. And then from here, you can either draw another line down like this, or you could also draw a rectangle. But we're just gonna draw a line and notice how if we have smart track on, this is gonna give us an inference point that's going to allow us to draw to a point um, that's aligned with this one right here, we wanna make sure that this is perfectly rectangular. So we'll draw one more line using the line tool right here. And so now we've closed this whole thing in. So we have four lines in here that are acting as individual curves. And so now we wanna offset these lines inward. So we're gonna select them and type in offset and hit the enter key. It's gonna ask us to select the curve to offset. And so this is a little bit of a problem, right? Because each one of these is an individual curve. So I'm gonna hit the escape key and we're just gonna select all of these and we're gonna type in the value of join. And so when you join them, what you've done is you've taken all of these curves and you've um, combined them into a single curve in the way that Rhino looks at those. So now what I wanna do is I just wanna type in a value of offset like this and hit the enter key. It's gonna ask me the side to offset like this. Notice how if I move my mouse inward, it's going to offset this in. If I move my mouse outward, it's gonna offset it out. So this really just depends on if your house is going to have a 35 foot by 25 foot external or interior dimension. Um, in this case, I want this to go inward, but first I wanna click on my distance and I wanna set my offset distance to we'll say six inches for this exercise. So I'm just gonna type in six inches and hit the enter key. Then I'm gonna move my mouse in and I'm going to click like this. And so notice how what that did is that came in here and this basically offset all of these edges inward just like this. So now we have two different curves that are in here. And so now we wanna take these walls that we've generated and we wanna extrude them upward. So the way that we can do that is we can select them both like this, but then we wanna use the function extrude CRV or extrude curve. So extrude CRV, then you can hit the enter key. Notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to extrude these up upward like this. And so we wanna extrude this upward to whatever our height is going to be. In this case, we want this to be 10 feet. So I'm gonna type in a value of 10 feet. The other thing that I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I've selected the solid yes function when I do this, because I want this to add a cap to the exterior of our building. This being solid is really important. We're gonna need it to be solid to use the tool that we wanna use to cut openings in our walls. So I'm just gonna type in a value of 10 feet and hit the enter key. And so I'm gonna jump over into shaded mode real quick so we can actually see what this did. But this basically took these curves and extruded them upward. Well, notice how when it did that, it added a cap to the top and the bottom. That means that this series of walls is actually solid, and that means that there's another set of tools that we can use. Solid basically means that a shape is completely enclosed um, without internal faces. So for example, this um, has a cap, it has the walls, and then it has the bottom, and these walls are completely enclosed with nothing inside of them. So now, we wanna do a couple different things. So the first thing is you can come in here and you can add a slab if you want to. So we could just use the rectangle function to draw a rectangle from one corner 
to the other corner like this. And then I'm going to take that curve, I'm going to do an extrude curve, and I'm going to extrude it down six inches or four inches. So I'll type in a value of 0.33 like this. And then I just want to move my mouse down and I want to click. So now I've got a slab on the bottom of this. So now our house isn't hollow anymore. All right, so now let's add a door opening. And one thing I find somewhat helpful is sometimes I jump back into my four window view here just by double clicking on my perspective view. What that's gonna allow me to do is that's gonna go into my front view right here. And I can just type in the value for rectangle and I'm just gonna draw a rectangle. So I'm gonna start by maybe moving this across and typing in a value of three feet like this and then clicking. And then I'm gonna move my mouse up and I'm gonna type in a value of seven feet like this. So now we've got a door opening on here. And now I can jump back into perspective mode by double clicking on this, but I'm just going to move this across. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move it so it's aligned with the corner. And so I know that my door opening is three feet wide. So I can just type in a value of three feet using my gumball tool. Whoops. So I'm going to click in here. That's actually going to be negative three feet. So make sure that you have the gumball turned on right here in order to do that. So what we want to do is we want to move this over. So we're going to select our curve and assume that this is going to be off of this wall, um, maybe three feet. So we'll just type in a value of negative three feet and we'll hit the enter key. That's going to move this over. So now we've got this kind of roughed out. I'm actually going to move it over another two feet right here. So now we've got the location of our door roughed out. Well, now what we need to do is we need to cut an opening using that outline. So to do that, we can select our door and we want to go up into our solid menu and we want to use the option for wire cut. And so one thing that can be really helpful when you do this is you want to make sure that you actually move this off of your wall a little bit first. So I'm just going to move it out right here. And then we're going to do the same thing. Um, so if it's not off the wall just a little bit, it might not cut an opening. So now if I click, it's going to do that. You want to make sure that you hit the enter key in order to accept that. So now what we've got is we've got an opening in our wall right here. All right. And so let's go ahead and let's model out our solid door. So in this particular situation, I'm actually going to double click in here and go back to my top down view. And what I want to do is I want to take this curve. Um, I want to select it and I actually want to move it so that it's aligned with, we'll call it the central point of our wall, actually maybe the back of our wall. But basically what I want to do is I actually don't want to use the gumball in this case. I actually want to type in move because what that's going to allow me to do is that's going to allow me to move things based on a point. And so I can use this to move this back just like this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type in or uh, select ortho so that this isn't going to be jumping around like it was but then I can just move my mouse and I can just move it to the back of this wall right here. Well, then I'm just gonna take this whole thing and I'm just gonna extrude it to whatever the thickness of my door might be. In this case, for example, it might be like, it might be like two inches. So I'm just gonna type in a value of two inches um, and hit the enter key. Actually, I'm gonna type in a value of negative two inches and hit the enter key like this. And so we're going to go ahead and call this good for right now, just so we can move forward with our roof modeling. But you can do some other things with this, like modeling frames and stuff like that. I'll link to a video down below where I did that. But what I want to do now is I want to add the roof to my model. And so in this case, probably the easiest way to add our roof is just to find a central point and draw a line up. So in order to do that, we're going to make sure that we have our smart track turned on and we're going to draw a line. So I'm just going to type in line and we're going to find the midpoint of the center right here. And we're going to draw this upward. I'm going to turn uh, ortho off, but we're going to draw this straight up like this. And so I'm just going to say that this is going to have a height of five feet. So we're saying at the center of our roof, this is going to go up five feet. That's going to allow us to set our slope. So now I can draw a line from that corner to this corner right here and another line from this corner to this corner right here. And then I can go ahead and I can delete out the central edge right here and I'm going to draw a line all the way across. So from this corner to this corner right here. What that's going to allow us to do is that's going to allow us to come in here and do a shift click and select all three of these curves like this. 
and we'll go ahead and um, double click on this to go into full perspective mode. But basically what I want to do here is I want to take this and I want to extrude my curve. So I'm going to do an extrude curve. I'm going to extrude this the length of my roof like this, making sure that I have the option for solid set to yes. But I can move my mouse and if I have Smart Track turned on, I can click on this back corner right here. So now what I have is I have the outline of a house. All right, and so now we need to take our roof and give it some thickness, right? Because it's kind of incomplete. And so there's a few different ways you could do this. The way that I like to do it is by holding Control and Shift on your keyboard. That's going to allow you to select individual faces in your model. So I want to do a Control Shift, and I want to select these two right here. And I'm actually going to start by duplicating them. So to do that, I'm just going to hold the Alt key and drag up on the gumball. Because basically what I want to do is I want to create a copy of these faces that aren't really connected to the other faces. Then I'm just going to use the move function to move them back down. So I'm just going to align them right here. But once I have those selected, now I can use the option for extrude SRF or extrude surface in order to extrude them upward. So we're going to select this surface and we're going to select this surface right here. We're going to hit the enter key. And then we just want to extrude these up by a value of six inches right here. Make sure you have the option for solid set to yes. And then we're just going to click in order to place this. So now what we've done is we've created a separate roof from the rest of our model right here, which can be helpful in a few different ways, which we'll take a look at in a second. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to extrude this along this direction right here, right? Because we want a little bit of an overhang. And so the way that we can do that is we're going to hold Control Shift and select this surface. And then I want to type in the option again for extrude SRF, so extrude surface. And in particular, this time, we want to make sure that we set our direction. So we can do that by tapping D and hitting Enter. And that's going to ask us to set a base point for our direction. So we can select this point right here and then this point right here. Well, what that's going to do is now whatever we extrude out is going to follow that direction. Well, in this case, we want to type in a value of one foot and hit the enter key. So now we have an overhang over here. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So control shift, select this surface, extrude SRF, set the direction. And type in a value of one foot and hit the enter key. All right, and so what I want to do is I'm going to take my roof and I want to basically extrude it outward 12 inches so I have an overhang. So I'm just going to do a control shift and I'm going to click on these surfaces like this. And then I just want to extrude them. So we're just going to click on this point and we're going to type in a value of negative 12 inches and hit the enter key. That's going to extrude this out so that I've got an overhang on my roof. Then we can do the same thing over here. In this case, we're going to type in 12 inches and hit the enter key. That's going to extrude this out right here. So now we have a very simple house that we've created in Rhino. And then from here, there's a bunch of different things that we can do. The only other thing in this case, what I want to do though, is I want to add some materials to this house. So the way that we're going to do that is we're just going to come in here and we're going to go to our materials. We're going to add materials to our model. And in this case, in this case, we're going to use materials from the Rhino material library. So I'm going to go into architectural wall and we'll go ahead and we'll add some brick and we can go with the English bond. I don't think it really matters for what we're doing here, but we're just going to select maybe like the brick wall 3d mortar right here. We've basically added that to our model. Well, now we can take that and we can drag it onto objects inside of Rhino. And notice how you may need to jump over under rendered view in order to see those materials. We're also going to import a roof material. So we're going to architectural roof and we're just going to do shingles in this case. But we'll just bring in these cedar gray materials right here. And so we don't want to just drag this onto our entire roof, right? Because you don't want shingles on the front and on the sides here. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to drag this over, but we're going to hold control and shift. Notice how when we hold control and shift, what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to apply this to individual surfaces in our model. So I can use this 
in order to apply this to all of the surfaces that we have in here. And I'm sure we could probably just join all of this together if we wanted to, but we're not going to worry about it too much for right now. But now we've got this material applied to our roof, but we've got a little bit of a problem, right? And the problem that we have is that our roofing material is facing the wrong direction. Well, when it's facing the wrong direction, it doesn't look very realistic. So what we can do though, is we can jump over into our texture settings on the right hand side of the page. You want to make sure that you've selected the texture that's been applied here, but you can actually scroll down and there's an option for rotation. So you can type in a value of 90 and hit the enter key. Notice how that rotated our shingles. You can also adjust the size by typing in a new value down here. So if I type in a value of like eight or something like that and then hit the tab key, notice how these are going to get bigger. If I type in a value of 12, they're gonna get even bigger. So you can use this to adjust the size of the texture that's being applied to your model like this. So the house is a little bit boring with the uniform material applied to it. So let's split our house so that we can apply two different materials to it. So we're gonna jump back into shaded mode right here. And for the moment, I'm going to select um, my slab and I'm just going to type in a value of hide because I want to hide that. And then what we want to do is we want to come in here and what we need to do is we need to split this up so that we can apply two different materials to it, right? Because right now if I do a control shift I can select this whole surface but I can't apply multiple materials to it in different locations because we need to split up the geometry. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to do a control shift and notice what I've done is I basically selected the surface that makes up the bottom of this house. Well, now I can hold the Alt key and drag this up with the gumball and I can drag this to the point where I want my brick to go, right? So in this case, I'm just gonna let up right here and notice what that's done is that's created a copy of that bottom series of edges right here, which if we jump down into wireframe mode, you can see how it's basically created a surface that runs all the way around. Well, now what I can do is go back into shaded mode and I can actually take this object and I can split it. So we're gonna type in a value of split and it's gonna ask us to select the object to split, which in this case is gonna be this object right here. I'm gonna hit the enter key and then it's gonna ask us to select the object we're going to cut with, which is going to be this object right here. So we're gonna select that and hit the enter key. Well, now notice what that's done is that split this up into two objects. And so we're gonna go back into our visibility and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna show our slab again. But now we're just gonna jump into rendered mode right here. And let's say I want this to have siding up above. So brick below, siding above. Well, all we have to do is just jump back in here and let's just add a siding material from our library. And we've got a lot of options, but let's go ahead and just go with, uh, maybe we'll go with like this siding gray thin right now. So we'll just bring that in. I'm just going to drag that and drop it onto my object right here. So what that's done is that's now given me a house that has multiple different objects or different materials on it. And if we wanted that to be something else, it's really easy to change. So if we wanted to try a different siding material, for example, we could just come in here, pick, like maybe instead of siding, we wanted to go with stucco. So we'll just go with one of these stucco materials right here. You can just drag that on here in order to assign that to your model. So you can use it to really quickly um, change different materials and apply different materials to different parts of your house. I will also link to a video on this page talking about how to model a floor plan if that's more the kind of modeling you're trying to do. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.